Welcome back guys, and today we're gonna look at the Alvaro de Bazan again. I'm probably mispronouncing that, I do apologize. But we're gonna do the Ship Request series again. It's been a little while, we had some new ships to look at last week. But let's get back into it. I haven't played this one too much, especially on this account. I uh, did play it a bit when it was getting released, early access, that kind of thing. But haven't really touched it since. It's not a ship I enjoyed too much. Longer reload, um, with the special gimmick here being a burst fire. You get three salvos, and then it has a 20 second reload. So the burst here is worse DPM, of course, but it does allow you to get some interesting trades away. Maybe the target is gonna disappear behind an island or into smoke, or you yourself are just gonna lose a, a gun angle on them. Maybe that's a really good option to use this burst fire. Or someone damage controls a fire and you wanna light something up really quick before you go dark, maneuver around the map, that kind of thing. Uh, but that is the special gimmick here on this uh, Spanish DD. And it's just okay is what I've found. It looks a lot like the uh, tier 10 Regalo. Uh, similar guns, a little different on the superstructure, but it is a big ship as well. In this case though, we don't actually have the fuel smoke. It's just a, gonna be a normal smoke here, which honestly can be a bit of a good thing. Allows you to get into a smoke and farm. We have pretty good range on this one as well. Uh, speed boost. It's just all right, just a normal speed boost, not anything too special there. The torpedoes have okay range, but they're pretty slow and they don't do that much damage. So we really are reliant on the main guns. And with that in mind, I'm gonna go with a bit of a gun focus build in the first one. I might swap over from gun range over to concealment. Maybe we can do some more uh, cap contests that way. 6.9 concealment this way. When you take concealment expert, it's 6.2, 6.1, something like that which is pretty good, honestly, considering the burst potential that this ship does have. It is four turrets, so eight guns total, which is quite a bit, 135 millimeters also pretty nice. Get some alpha damage out of it that way. So with this being the ship request series, make sure you guys leave whatever ship you wanna see next in the comments down below, whatever ends up being the most upvoted. That's what I'm gonna play next time when I decide to do one of these ship request videos. But for now, let's jump into the game and see what we can do. So to start with here, we do have ourselves an arms race game. Unfortunately, it's going to be a little difficult, I think. The carrier is on this flank. Bazan does not really have much in the way of AA. So this could be a little tricky. There's a Des Moines here as well. Say hi real quick. Make sure we're left on team. There we go. Managed to avoid that. I need to wait here, though. Ideally, I would like to open up or something like that, but I need to know where this Sherman is. We're going to get outgunned by that very, very quickly. The Kleber is middle, so I'm not too concerned about that one. I'm hmm, not sure what the Conqueror is going to do, but I want to go out wide like this. The carrier went pretty much directly for this initial buff, so going and playing the middle there is pretty difficult. So we're going to play the flank a little bit more here. And I'm not going to open up quite yet on this Conqueror. Although, okay, Sherman's on the other side. So when you're playing a gunboat DD, you do want to note what ships, especially the DDs, that you can outgun. Because, yeah, if you get into a gunfight, like let's say the Kleber was here or the Sherman was here and it just kind of freely opened up, yeah, that would, that would not go well at all. Jutland is right here. Certainly worth considering doing a booster here. I'm actually going to reload. Uh, I'm going to use engine boost here. Probably should have boosted, but it's okay. We can use our smoke, and we will be fine here. Should get away just fine. Don't eat all the Conqueror Salvo. Okay, we're good. Barely, but we are good. Get some damage in on this Conqueror. So having 15 kilometers of range is pretty nice, but if you don't have the shell arcs to really sustain it, it can be somewhat painful. But as you can see here, 10 second lead time out to, you know, 14 kilometers isn't too bad. That is a damage control on that Conqueror, by the way. Okay, one of our Torps is back up. This is a greedy thing I'm doing here, by the way. But I'm not going to shoot for just a second. I'm going to pop out of my smoke just to spot. See where the Des Moines at. It's a little greedy. 
But what it does do is it allows these guys to play a little better into the Des Moines there. Pretty broadside to a Jutland though. It's a little spooky, a little scary. But the Des Moines getting a free farm on the Richelieu, for example, is not great. Let's see, is Des Moines radaring? 9.8. I like to do this sometimes as well. Just sit next to a Des Moines or anything with radar. And we're slightly within that radar range. And that allows me to basically know whenever I can play around the radar or not. So if he does radar us, we can just quickly accelerate out of it and it's all good, but if he doesn't, well, it's nice to know that he still has it available. Hmm, our Schlieffen's playing very, very aggressive, which is pretty scary. If he goes down, we might, uh, might not do so well on this flank. Double Schlieffen getting... There's Jutland Torps. Uh, double Schlieffen here in the middle of the map for our team. It's pretty strong. But having the carrier go at them like that is not the best for the team. Des Moines is also pushing in here. Hmm. I don't... This Des Moines really does lock me out quite a lot. I don't really feel like pushing too aggressively here. Okay, there's the radar. That's fine. Slow down for one salvo, and then we'll get out of it. Should be fine. Planes are on the way a little bit. Should avoid this one as well. There we go. See? All fine. A little awkward on this flank, but it's fine. Maybe we need to deal with this Kleber. That's probably what we need to do. It's a bit of an odd match, this one, I will say. We did get to a flank where we do want to be gunboating things with our build. It's pretty good, but having the Des Moines there is tough, especially when we don't have anyone to really punish that. You know, there wasn't like a, a battleship kind of out here somewhere to arc over the island and hit that really hard. So Des Moines and Schlieffen both go down there. Oh my, and we're losing people on the other side. Okay, so it's an arms race blowout. Raise your hands if you saw that one coming. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Why is our Des Moines upset at me? I didn't... I wasn't the one who yellowed in like that. <laughs> oh, great. It's just... You know what? No, it's actually a good thing. It's just another example to you guys of why you don't listen to in-game chat. It's a great example. I've talked about this on live stream a lot. I don't know if I've ever discussed it in YouTube videos, so why don't we do that now, actually? It's good enough time while we're getting our... while our team is just getting absolutely destroyed. Think about all the times that you've been in a match and been frustrated after dying because your teammates didn't support you in a very specific way. Well. Do you have the perspective in those situations of what was going on in that other person's match? The answer is no. The answer is no. Um, and there's going to be times, like, maybe think of it from the other's perspective. In this case, does that Des Moines have any idea what was happening in my match? No. They were just focused on their own match, and they ended up dying. And they wanted to see me do something, I don't know what, to support them so that they didn't die in that situation. But I have my own game to think about. And sure, it's maybe a selfish thing to think like that, but I can't just do everything in my power to support one other player, right? That's never gonna be the best option for my play. And you gotta really consider that as a player in World of Warships, any multiplayer game, really. You can't be listening to in-game chat, especially when someone just died around you because they're not thinking straight. They're just thinking, I died, and oh, this player near me didn't do everything to support me, right? And you can't expect people to do that in an online multiplayer game. There's 12 other people here. Am I really expecting every other person in this match to drop anything that they want to do in this match and only support my ship and what I want to do in this game? Of course not. We're radared by Petro right now. Of course not, that's just unrealistic. 
but that is how a lot of people think. Especially when they're frustrated. And this guy's probably just frustrated, and, and that happens. I get it. But if you're new to the game, if you think about in-game chat or try and seriously take some criticism from in-game chat, I would say don't. I don't think any in-game chat criticism is valid, really, at all. I, I don't think I've ever really had an uh, option or a time where I've seen something in in-game chat that I've gone, yeah, that's like actually valid criticism. Let me let me incorporate that into my games next time. <laughs> it's it's really just never ever happened. So in-game chat, I would honestly turn it off. If I were you guys, personally, I would have it off if uh, if I didn't uh, want to say hi to people like uh, like here. See, and I want to be able to do that, so I leave it on. But don't be listening to in-game chat. It is <laughs> it is not good. It is not good. And I think most I think most of you know that. But uh, just for those of you that don't, it's pretty useless. Do you have a Monty here? Richelieu coming up the flank. This game is not as out of hand as it might seem. It's not great, of course, but it's not quite as out of hand as it might have seemed. But it's not great. <laughs> it's not great, certainly. I'm gonna try and get down here. Oh, Petro's there. Yikes. He probably has radar again soon. Okay, Jotlin's there. That's what I wanted to figure out is where is this Jotland? I'm operating in stealth right now because I do want to actually get through here and maybe aggress on this Jotland or something like that. Des Moines there. That's not good for us. We haven't done a lot of damage in this one, but you're not going to get every game where you're allowed to do really good damage. One has stopped. That's good for us. But our Monty's down. Okay. There is Petro Radar. Doesn't last particularly long, so we should be okay. One will get a few shots. That's fine. That's fine. Conqueror, okay. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna smoke up. And maybe try and help kill this Petro. Should have been using my smokes maybe a bit more aggressively, but I had the decision, tough decision to make earlier on. Do I smoke up and farm a little bit on the 910 line or do I try and spot for my team who's pushing in very recklessly? I decided to go with spotting. I don't think either one would have made too much of a difference. Should be aware that we could be getting some Jotland Torps soon. Quite broadside to it as well. Couple fires and this guy should die. This isn't a bad ship. I just find it rather, rather vanilla as far as gunboat DDs go. What was that? Is that a blind drop from the carrier? That sucks. Gonna be a Schlieffen in my face? Possibly. It was a blind drop from the carrier. Nice. It's fine. It happens. It happens. It's not like there's a Richelieu in the open to go after. <laughs> no, we'll go after a blind drop for PQ. That's what we'll do. <laughs> Alrighty. I think that's going to be our death here. Maybe we can walk out here and say hello to the Jutland if he's here. But more than likely we die to the Irian, and that's okay. Nope, no Jotland. Enemy destroyer detected. He's in the middle. Okay. Imagine we can Citadel him? That'd be kind of funny. The enemy is about to win. Not quiet. Turtle engine damage. Main turret, turtle damage. Problem solved, sir. 
I did get one. Unfortunate. Missed the angle. <laughs> we weren't quite close enough. Oh well. Sometimes you can you can go for those AP salvos into people. At least in those uh, closer range scenarios. With one... What are these? 135s? Is that what they are? They're possibly going to do that, but it's not all too certain, unfortunately. Yeah. 135. The AP must just not have as much pen as, like, Kleber. Kleber would have done a much better job there. This is just an okay ship. We'll try, we'll try the less range, more conceal version. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think <laughs> I think I've said that enough. Uh, we'll try this one. Maybe that allows us to aggress on some DDs a little bit more. Lacking some range then, only 12.6. Can be a little awkward at tier 10, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Yeah, we'll keep we'll keep the rest of the build the same. Let's try again. So we're getting into our next game here. We got a little better matchmaker certainly. Don't have to deal with a carrier or a sub in this one, which is very much appreciated. 6.2 kilometer detect here going to help us out a lot. Uh, we're against a Shima, Gearing, and a Daring. Daring's probably the scariest one out of those for gunboats. But they do all outspot us, which is potentially a bit of a problem. Petro is pretty scary radar. Venice, Worcester also. Okay, we're going to use our boost to just get to this island. Because I'm very sure Petro will just radar us instantly when we step on this. We'll see. Vermont there, okay. But we're behind the island from the Petro, so we're doing okay. And we'll just kind of hang out here for now. We don't have too much support, so we'll be a little bit careful of that. Hello, gearing. Why are you detected? Do you not have conceal? This is a great use of burst. Because we're about to just duck into this island so we don't take any damage. And we get a bunch of damage in on the enemy DD, which feels great. So having that burst there is really, really nice for situations like that. So that's going to be a pretty positive thing. Although something like a Kleber, for example, has a reload booster that then you don't have to even wait that 20 second cooldown period after. But you do have a limited number of those. So I can see where this is an interesting pickup for that reason. You have a lot of health, and you have that smoke as well, which is very good. I'm surprised the gearing didn't get in here to uh, stall us out. Very surprised at that, actually. This is maybe too greedy. We'll see. Boosters go on the island, though. Oh, that's a Venice. That's terrifying, <laughs> okay. That's terrifying, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was thinking, oh yeah, you know, I'll just back out here and deal with this gearing all real quick. Oh my goodness, good thing he didn't spot me. Uh, I'm not sure what our Salem's doing, but hey, why don't we give him a smoke? It's not like we're really using it uh, right now anyway. Help him get to this island, if that's what he's trying to do. See, there you go. There's the drop everything and support your teammate that we're looking for, right? <laughs> Ooh, and the gearing is here. Might turn out this way. No, he doesn't. Dang it. Well, we should get an angle anyway. Probably move over to the B cap as well. There we go. Worcester should have a shot on us. But we should be able to live this. Oh, Worcester is really low, actually. Nice. Don't take too much to the Worcester. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. But that's a gearing out already. And we don't lose too much HP to it. Move ourselves over to B. That shouldn't have happened, though. I don't know why the gearing wasn't running concealment. Maybe he just got it. I suppose that's possible. But, yeah, you definitely want conceal on your DDs for that reason. 
Can even maybe look at killing this Worcester. Oh, there's a Petro here. Oh, he's not looking at us. Try and help out a little bit. No, I think we're going to be missing out on the range a little bit here. Okay, Aegir gets him. Very nice. Preussen is low. But our team does have a nice lock on the C cap, as well as A. So, another blowout. <laughs> World Warships, everyone. World Warships. Oh, wait. These are slow torps. Uh, the Petra will easily be fast enough to outrun those. Uh, that's my bad. What is this ship? Is this a coal ship? I need to look after. It's not a ship I'm really going to recommend too much to people, though. I don't know. It just doesn't seem all that interesting to me. I, I feel like I'd rather be playing a Clubair. And I know oh, French DD, so it's so good. It is so good, you know? It's It's... One of the best gunboat lines. But maybe you want something with a smoke. But then maybe you just get the Gdansk, right? Okay, Shima's here. Hello, Shima. There we go, that concealment helping us out here. Probably should have considered using that booster sooner. I should have known you would just smoke. Okay, looks like we dodged the orbs. We're gonna have to watch out for Venice and Petro right here. Okay. Let's see. You got the aim? Is he not even looking at me? I don't think he is. He's not even looking. All right. There we go. Yikes, that sap is so scary. <laughs> Alright, that put us in a bit of a weird spot, but we'll just chill in here and farm a little bit. Buffalo radar could just kill us. Pretty nice, pretty nice fire. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, we're probably dead. That's okay. Speed boost to hopefully force some misses. I mean, we should be dead. Do you have Hydro too? Probably. <laughs> we should be dead. <laughs> oh, he's definitely got Hydro. Five kilometer Hydro, right? Yeah, okay. Bow in. Torps in. Had to leave anyway. Yeah, didn't get him off in time. And we couldn't sit it out. So that's disappointing to see the AP not really be able to do much to cruisers. Typically when you have higher caliber AP, you're going to do a lot better against cruisers. We got over aggressive, but I mean, our team wins this anyway. They're just camping the back. That's kind of how World of Warships is these days. I don't know. I think I'm going to do it. Call it there. This is not a ship I have like a ton of fun playing, I'll be honest. So... I think I've done enough for now. We got uh, one blowout loss, one blowout win. Uh, let me know what you want to see next. Uh, we don't need to do that now. I can do that later. Yeah, ship request. Let me know what you want to see next time. Um, <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't be uh, trying to bias the results, but we've been doing some obscure ships, let's just say. <laughs>
<laughs> you guys uh, maybe just want to see me suffer. Is that it? That's possibly it. That's maybe what uh, people tune in for on live streams as well. I've kind of noticed that trend. <laughs> we did all right in this one. I don't know. Bazan is... It's just okay. It's nothing too special. The other gunboat DDs at the tier are just all so much better. And if you want a more conceal-focused cap contester, play a Daring or something else. And if you're looking for a smoke DD um, with a bit of gun power, well, Gdansk is going to come out next patch. That's the nice thing about uh, right now, at least. We don't have too long to wait for this early access period to be over. So Gdansk, yeah. Just a much, much better version. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, upvote whatever you want to see next, too. That's important. Whatever is the most upvoted, that's what I'm going to play next. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.